Hello friends! In this video we're going to look at this Bose Sound Dock. This dates from about uh, 2004. It was made up to 2008. So this one is somewhere in that period. This is designed to connect to an iPod, which was all the rage in that era. Just before the iPhone hit and kind of started the smartphone era. This is uh, kind of the way to get music uh, of a higher quality than the iPod itself could provide. So you can imagine this is kind of a bedside unit or tabletop unit. Stick your iPod in here and enjoy some higher quality sound than the built-in speakers or maybe even the earbuds could do. Um, generally speaking, I'm seeing a lot of these kind of iPod docks out there, different brands. Since this is Bose, we can know that it was on the high end of such things. Uh, other things we can look at here, aside from the brand itself, this is actually quite heavy and, uh, you know, solid construction aside from, you know, maybe not the most expensive plastic shell, but it's a, ultimately an inexpensive consumer product. This requires a power supply. It must include its own internal amplifier wouldn't run speakers directly from the iPod. It also includes a remote control. At least that was originally the case. In this case, getting it at the thrift store, all I got was the unit you see. So no remote control, no power supply. Paid $6.99 for it and got a 25% discount. So uh, whatever that works out to. So with all the parts, these go on eBay for about $50 or so. There isn't a lot of demand for them because we're past the iPod era. Everybody has other music sources such as, you know, smart speakers and uh, their phones. So iPods are kind of a thing of the past except for maybe some hardcore collectors or users. So this doesn't have a lot of value in perfect condition and in particular with uh, you know, it's got some dings and things. Missing the power supply and the remote control, this is essentially worthless as is. Uh, it's worth the six or so dollars I paid for it, including the discount to uh, take it apart, see what's inside. And in particular, I'm hoping to repurpose this as a surround sound center speaker. I'm going to do a video on those um, in the future but really uh, one of my frustrations with surround sound systems has been that the center speakers are kind of lacking and they're given a lot more importance in surround sound systems than the speakers themselves seem to be able to deliver. So as a first step let's take some a look at we can get some hints about what this works without even taking it apart. In the video you can see a left speaker, a right speaker, up at the top there seems to be some sort of a horn for probably high frequencies and in the middle here is what I believe is a passive uh, element that delivers the low frequencies. So imagine one of the problems you have from an acoustics point of view, you've got your iPod sitting up here blocking the sound, but yet in the form factor we're working with here we don't really have a lot of surface area to spare. We've got to use everything we've got. So my thought without having taken it apart is that this is a passive radiator that makes low frequencies radiate off the sides of the iPod unit and we're still using that surface area for something that's important acoustically uh, and yet since it's low frequencies it'll kind of radiate off the side of the back of the iPod and uh, you know not really affect the sound quality too much because of the fact that um, low frequency sounds are not highly directional and higher frequency sounds are. 
so that's probably why they put the what appear to be the tweeter element and some sort of horn design at the top so as usual I'm speculating without having taken this apart but our next step is going to be to do exactly that and see how it works an obvious first step is to take this pedestal off that connects to the iPod so in one scenario it might be finding the important wires that connect to the iPod connector throwing that in this pedestal away and uh, possibly reusing the internal amplifier of this for the center speaker purpose that I envision this could be an unpowered speaker so basically we can pull the power amplifier out of this reuse it or scrap it and then we don't have to solve the power supply problem what I'm not going to do is buy a replacement power supply for this which uh, doesn't make sense economically so we've got three screws here more here I'll go ahead and take those apart and we'll see what's inside point I forgot to mention before this has a minus and plus button for uh, probably volume just a convenience now that we've got the lid down on that you can see these are just little plastic gizmos here that push these micro switches and there's this little board that uh, connects through this ribbon cable and maps to this in some way right now it's hanging from the cable itself after having taken the screws out so I'll just let's go ahead and I think I can just literally tug that until it pops out there you go okay so this piece is of no real interest except it may be of use to uh, map out what the signal paths are uh, there's online documentation of what the iPod connector is so this plastic piece here is still screwed in probably by some or all of these four screws but I uh, don't have a need for that so we'll take off these screws next so we'll pop this panel off and see what's underneath so this is an RF shielding box of some kind uh, says do not reuse well obviously they don't know who they're dealing with here let's pull that off so this is some sort of with all these pins seems to be a signal processor circuit of some kind maybe it receives digital audio directly from the iPod I'm not sure uh, I hadn't really thought about that but that might make sense so next we're gonna pull this board out and see what's going on but before I do that it looks like oh okay this plastic piece is kind of one whole assembly so that's interesting we have a connector here that evidently goes to the rest of it um, and the main power connector was captive on this board there's this back side which also says do not reuse actually they're right that I'm not going to plan to reuse these but I don't think they should be in charge of that decision I'm guessing this is the audio section and what these covers are all about is isolating the audio from the computer noise on the other side I have to pull that out separately I found out why this side was tougher to pull off it has these little locking tabs on some of these the other one didn't it's just a friction fit so you have to look inside here to figure out what this is kind of surprised to see a large IC there maybe this side is also processing and that's some sort of SRAM or a flash memory or something 
So that suggests that the audio amplifier unit is down deeper inside here somewhere. We'll see how we get that apart. Um, one of our rubber feet is missing. Sometimes screws are hidden under rubber feet. But uh, I'll have to look at this closer to figure out what the next step is on taking it apart. It isn't obvious from here. I've turned this around. We already had this rubber foot off. There's no screw under there. I pulled this rubber foot off. No screw under there. So I think uh, ultimately there's screws underneath these this nameplate. I can't feel that with my finger, but maybe there's a hard piece of plastic under the nameplate. I'm going to try to pull that off. I kind of like to leave it on uh, and intact, but uh, you know, this is the way it goes. As I looked at the nameplate, I realized I had another option, which is this nice grill here pops off and probably reveals some screws underneath. So I'm going to try to get that off and show you what's underneath. I've pried some of the edges of that out, starting with this lip under what was the pedestal. And we can just work our way around. This is a friction fit type thing with some rubber gaskets okay so now we can see what we thought we saw before so I was wrong about this being a passive radiator this is a hard piece of plastic so uh, looks like it's got four screws and that will hold the amplifier module and thinking out loud with this type of connector we can be sure that a digital signal is going in here so that brings us back to the fact that this board we looked at earlier is a digital only board that's going to provide some sort of digital audio that goes into the amplifier module which would have its own D to A converters Scooter are you getting all this? There's lots of interesting smells, doesn't it? Might be fun to play with, too. Who's a cute kitty? Tasty. We just got Scooter about a week ago, so he's uh, pretty socialized by now, but enough to beat up on some of my projects, right? You gonna talk to me? Say hi for the camera. Okay, you're gonna perfect the camera? I just realized that since this isn't a passive radiator and this porthole here may be where the base is directed from. So what I'm sp expecting when we pull out the speakers later is that these have large magnets on them meaning that they have a lot of power. I hope he's trying to poke at the rubber foot. But um, they rely on the overall enclosure to deliver that power. In other words, it's not just the surface area of the uh, speaker cones themselves. I guess I should let him play with that. We got a dog a few months ago and she tends to eat everything, but or used to. She's full, almost full grown now, but he pokes at things, but he doesn't eat things except for cat food. So that's kind of an advantage for you cat people to brag about. So I pulled out the audio module. We can immediately unhook the speakers. Scooter, you want to help? 
So this becomes a standalone thing for reuse and salvage. We've got a basic connector for the left and right driver here. That's pretty straightforward. This thing, uh, we'll have to figure out what's under there. I'd kind of like to do it without destroying this foam, but we well, may have to make a compromise on that. Maybe I should get the scooter to shred it for me. Oh, you got an itchy? Here's a clue. I see a screw under there. Might be one on the other side. Or I think more likely it's got some sort of clip hold in on this side for easy assembly and just one screw holding it in aside from the clip. So I'll take that out and we should be able to remove this module. I hope you all are enjoying Scooter as much as he's enjoying himself. Okay, so this has a little, this foam has a little adhesive on it. Not really, looks like it's not going to be easy to take that off without tearing it up a little bit, but not too worried about that. I don't know if this is just a interconnection for the speaker element or if it has some sort of audio driver part on it of some kind. I think we're going to make an executive decision just to tear the foam and then deal with that later if we have to. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. This is self-contained. Maybe this is a high-powered piezo driver. In fact, this thing that I thought was maybe a micro switch or maybe a little uh, mechanical nub, that might actually be the speaker driver. Who knows? So probably the idea here is to put in uh, a high uh, okay now I told him you don't eat stuff so don't eat the foam so this plastic cavity here appears to be the uh, the waveguide. They used to advertise these things as a kind of having their waveguide technology, which is, you know, an established thing. And from an engineering point of view, a waveguide is what I would call an impedance matcher, which let's say we've got a lot of ability to push air in a small surface area, like whatever this driver is that I'm going to discover. And we need to push what's effectively less air on a larger surface. So that's analogous to, uh, let's say, gear ratio on a bicycle. So... Kitty, you're not helping. So you push a little air with a lot of pressure here, and that turns into a lot of air with less pressure here. And maybe this is where the high frequency sound comes out. Here we've got what looks kind of like an IC except that I see that the cable IC that the cable plugs in that so that's really a connector. A couple of passive elements and we almost don't have anything left but that this little button thing is the driver and due to its small size I think it has to be high frequency so maybe we've got here some sort of noise filter and then this apparently uh, high frequency tweeter element and then this is just a cable with a right angle connection and the audio driver board makes everything that's needed for that. While Scooter continues to have the time of his life with these screws, I pulled out four other screws out of this driver element just so we can look at that. I don't think there's too much to see. This is probably just empty underneath 
with the cable running through. I guess the cable's from this side. But I kind of want to look and see how big the magnet is on that. Looks like that's another thing that's going to have to be fished out, so we'll do that. It turns out that this driver element was stuck in with maybe a little gasket glue or rubberization, so I pulled that out a little bit with a pair of needle nose pliers, and that gets us what I thought we'd see, which is um, if you look at the size of the magnet compared to the size of the cone. I think this is the biggest ratio I've ever seen on a speaker of magnet size versus cone size. Um, so this speaker and the enclosure are designed to produce a lot of power as in a pretty loud noise. And that's kind of what Bose calling card was on this type of product was, you know, uh, loud and relatively high quality sound from a small space. So, you know, if you want to use this in the bedroom and wake up the wife, you know, this is the way to do it. I also see a little acoustic foam in the bottom there. And uh, so without digging too much deeper, I think we can be pretty certain that this is nothing left but a little foam. Here's a manufacturing sticker I just noticed. Um, you know, wires. I've seen this on other Bose products. They use this as a little, uh, probably acoustic reasons, keep the wire from rattling around inside there, especially if you're producing a lot of power with a big magnet. So basically we've got a plastic enclosure, which is important because everything is designed here as a system. The speakers, I can drive those directly just as normal speakers. Might be able to figure out if they're standard 8 ohm speakers and they may be some other value uh, such as 4 ohms. There, let's try to see if they say. I didn't look at that. Okay, I've seen this in Bose stuff before. They put their part number on it but they don't tell you anything about it. It's made in Mexico. So that's nice, but we'll have to figure out impedance ourselves. Let's do that next. Right, Scooter? Thank you. I jury rigged some wires and uh, my multimeter and came up with 3.3 ohms of resistance. And since resistance is a little bit lower than impedance for a speaker, uh, we can assume that this is a standard 4 ohm speaker. And of course the other one is identical. So what we've got to work with here is a uh, pair of 4 ohm speakers that may function by themselves just fine. Maybe that we really need this strange tweeter element. I'm not certain about that, but uh, we'll try to figure out what that goes in some other occasion. Now let's take a tour of this amplifier module. We've got two large capacitors here that are probably for the power supply filtering. Some smaller electrolytics here that are also power supply and even smaller ones here. So this has three channels on it, I assume, left, right, and uh, high frequency maybe. There's also some miscellaneous parts here. One thing I didn't realize at first, this is actually an aluminum plate that acts as a heat sink. And if you see down inside that... Scooter, you're not helping. If you see down inside that... We'll look at it this way. If you see down inside, there's an IC that's upside down that's connected thermally with some sort of heat sink epoxy or whatever to this overall plate. So I guess it 
follows logically that if we're going to drive these big magnets with the speakers then uh, we're going to need a big amplifier to go with that and this is big in the power sense which really implies this heat sink but it's not big in the physical sense because it's an integrated amplifier and we've got other support components on here um, you know there may be D to A converter chip on here probably unless that's built right into the amplifier which is possible I don't really know without pulling it apart so next let's take out these four screws and see what we can see from the other side All right scooter here, don't puncture my speakers taking all six screws out of this um, and looking at it again I realize these are marked with L so these are two large inductors uh, those are definitely keepers from a salvage point of view I haven't ever seen large surface mounted inductors of that type before they put some hard plastic adhesive of some kind on top of this it's probably for acoustic reasons to keep this from rattling around also under these capacitors the parts that are direct on the board don't need that type of thing so they paid some attention to the acoustic uh, needs of this as a kind of a very loud unit in a small space I'm going to pull this off now for the first time so we're seeing about what I expected a lot of passive components uh, capacitors, resistors, small values. This is an integrated amplifier that based on those large inductors I'm thinking this is probably a stereo amplifier with um, passive components to isolate the third channel. Down here we've got a little piece of thermal uh, foam material and then our heat sink that we already saw so this heat sink is potentially keeper from a salvage point of view so I'm thinking that a digital signal came in here so that would mean if true that the D to A converter is probably built right into the amplifier that's possible so this board is not really reusable as is because you'd have to figure out what the signals were so we can look at that as a salvage piece to put aside along with this processor board probably nothing to salvage there whatsoever what do you think Scooter? okay I'm glad you agree put that aside oh but you know what this cable might make a very fun kitty toy what do you think Oh, don't eat that. Here, play with this one that doesn't have the toxic foam on it. Oh, he likes it. Hear that purr? So at this point, we're left with the parts we know we'll use. The enclosure, front grill, two main drivers and hopefully this little uh, high frequency driver which I think is a piezo element most likely so assuming I put the piezo element back in I would need a passive crossover to separate the high frequencies it may be for my purpose that leaving the piezo out is okay um, and I could just use these two elements so as Scooter and I thought about it more I realized this didn't really make sense as any kind of audio element for one thing this is a sealed cavity here and this foam would seal it up acoustically so I went online and found a service manual for this and it's one of these things that's obvious once you know the answer this is an infrared module sensor that's used for the remote control 
which is good news for me that means that I don't need to worry about this or any replacement basically I can hook up some sort of connectors on the bottom maybe by drilling through or whatever put this plate back on as a cover more than anything and then I'll have a viable uh, two channel or wire it together maybe as one channel uh, speaker for a uh, sender speaker like I've been thinking about and there's more insight uh, into what's going on acoustically where my fingers are there's a slot that works its way back out through here and here so essentially this is the porting hole for the two speakers here and this doesn't have anything to do with high frequency at all like I've been saying so basically all of the sound of this comes out of either the front facing elements or the porthole and with this closed up and then with this serving no acoustic function that's the entire unit so I think the reuse part of this will make into a separate video so you can look for that in the future so after I get that reworked uh, I'm planning to do a comparison of some center speakers that I've acquired and uh, we'll throw that into the mix so look forward to that thanks for watching and bye bye